Hey everybody, welcome to Planeta Isla. Today we're going to go over the ancient Egyptian civilization. Make sure to watch until the end because it's one of the most amazing histories I've ever seen. Ancient Egypt was a civilization of ancient North Africa situated in the country now known as Egypt. The history of ancient Egypt occurred as a series of stable kingdoms separated by periods of relative instability known as intermediate periods. It reached the peak of its power in the New Kingdom of Late Bronze Age, ruling much of Nubia, that includes Aswan and Sudan, and the Near East, which is now known as the Middle East, then finally entered a period of slow decline. Egypt was conquered by a number of foreign powers. One of them was the Macedonians under the rule of Alexander the Great and the Ptolemaic Kingdom founded by Ptolemy I, who was an illegitimate half-brother and constant companion of Alexander the Great. For three centuries, the Ptolemies were the longest and most recent Egyptian dynasty of ancient origin. It lasted for 275 years when under Cleopatra it fell to the Roman Empire and became a Roman province. The throne of Egypt goes according to Ptolemy's wishes to Ptolemy XIII and Cleopatra. Ptolemy XIII is Cleopatra's 10-year-old brother. Cleopatra was about 18 years old and had ruled for a short time as a co-regent with her father. Cleopatra and Ptolemy married to ensure that power never leaves the royal family. There was no affection between Cleopatra and her brother. The success of ancient Egyptian civilization came partly because of their ability to adapt to the conditions of the Nile River Valley for agriculture, predictable flooding, and controlled irrigation of the fertile valley that produced an overabundance of crops which supported the population growth and social development and culture. With wealth and assets to spare, the administration sponsored mineral exploitation of the Nile River Valley and surrounding desert regions, the early development of an independent writing system or the hieroglyphics, the organization of massive construction and agricultural projects, trade with surrounding regions, and the military intended to proclaim Egyptian superiority. The pharaoh ensured the cooperation and unity of the Egyptian people in the context of an elaborate system of religious belief. There are many achievements of the ancient Egyptian. Number one, quarrying. Stone quarries produced quality stones for the construction of decorative monuments such as sculptures and obelisks. These quarries are now recognized archaeological sites. Number two, land surveying, which is the technique, art, and science of determining the terrestrial or three-dimensional positions of points and the distances and angles between them, and construction techniques that supported the building of monumental pyramids, temples, and obelisks. A system of mathematics, a system of numeration based on multiples of 10, often rounded off to the higher power. Number four, a system of medicine which went largely unchanged and included simple non-invasive surgery, setting of bones, dentistry, and an extensive set of drug making. Number five, irrigation systems and agricultural production techniques. Number six, the first known plank boats. Number seven, Egyptian faience or sintered quartz, glaze strip and glaze composition of ceramic making and glass technology. Number eight, new forms of literature. And number nine, the earliest known peace treaty 
made with the Hittites, also known as the Eternal Treaty or the Silver Treaty, the only ancient Near Eastern Treaty for which the versions of both sides have survived. Ancient Egypt has left an immortal legacy. Its art includes paintings, sculptures, drawings on papyrus, faience, jewelry, ivories, and other art media. Much of the surviving art comes from tombs and monuments, giving insight into the ancient Egyptian afterlife beliefs. The ancient Egyptians believed that when they died, their spiritual body would continue to exist in an afterlife very similar to their living world. They believe in immortality, that death is rather a temporary interruption rather than the cessation of life. Early coffins were rectangular in shape. The mummy-shaped coffins appeared in the Middle Kingdom about 1900 BCE. It changed over time as religious beliefs evolved. The general purpose remained the same. Preparation includes purchase of small funerary items such as furniture, expensive coffins, jewelry, amulets, stelae, the Book of the Dead, and shaptis, which is a small funerary statuette. When they died, they were mummified so that the soul would return to the body giving it breath and life. Household equipment and food and drink were placed on offering tables outside the tomb's burial chamber to provide for the person's needs in the afterworld. Many years could be spent in building and preparing tombs which were known to the ancient Egyptians as houses of eternity. They were usually built on the western bank of the Nile, in the land of the dead, and made from non-perishable materials such as stone. Commissioning or buying a coffin, which is probably the single most important piece of funerary equipment. The tomb itself, if built and designed properly, had the power of restoring life and giving immortality to the dead owner. Preparing tombs correctly was a common theme in Egyptian texts. Master builders and supervisors were instructed to perform rituals during construction and guidelines were provided on where to build, how to design, and also what materials to use. Almost every surface of the coffin was covered with prayers and spells from funerary texts important religious symbols and sins of various gods and goddesses associated with death, protection, and the underworld. Much of the surviving art comes from tombs and monuments, giving insight into the ancient Egyptian afterlife beliefs. Both its art and architecture were widely copied and its antiquities carried off to far corners of the world. Its monumental ruins have inspired the imaginations of travelers and writers for millennia. The favorable and deep admiration for antiquities and excavations in the early modern period by discoverers and archaeologists led to the scientific investigation of Egyptian civilization and a greater appreciation of its cultural legacy. They are now called Egyptology's cultural legacy. The pharaoh was usually depicted wearing symbols of royalty and power. The pharaoh was the absolute monarch of the country and had complete control of the land and its resources. The king was the supreme military commander and head of the government. The temples formed the backbone of the economy. Ancient Egyptians did not use coinage until the late period. They did use a type of money barter system 
with standard sacks of grain and the Deben, a weight of roughly 91 grams of copper or silver, forming a common denominator. During the 5th century BC, coined money was introduced into Egypt from abroad. At first, the coins were used as standardized pieces of precious metal rather than true money. But in the following centuries, international traders came to rely on coinage. Egyptian society was highly divided into levels or classes based on social status, education, or income. And social status was expressly displayed. The ancient Egyptians viewed men and women were all equal. Women such as Hatshepsut and Cleopatra VII even became pharaohs, while others wielded power as divine wives of Amon. Cleopatra VII was the last member of the Ptolemaic dynasty. Her reign ended in the year 30 BC. For more than 275 years, the rule of Egypt was started by a Macedonian and ended by a Macedonian. Alexander the Great and Cleopatra are both Macedonians. Subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss more videos about travel and much more. Take care.